Hey there, today I'm gonna to share 11 things to do near Silverthorne, Colorado. Silverthorne is one exit before the Breckenridge exit on I-70, and Silverthorne is a great place to visit in the summer, and you can do 11 things there if you are on a budget. I'm gonna give you family-friendly outdoor adventure ideas and some places to eat. So let's pop into my video. My name is Laurie and I wanna say welcome to my channel. Please leave me a comment below and introduce yourself. I have visited Colorado in the winter and now that I've gone during the summer, I have found 11 things for you to do. These are with kids. We had a six year old, 11 year old and 12 year old, 13 year old, and we had a 70 year old along with my brothers and their families. So these are kid friendly, budget friendly ideas for you. Silverthorne is nestled in like this pocket of where the outlets are, a good city vibe, um, trails everywhere, and you also have Breckenridge and Keystone right there. So you're gonna have these gorgeous views of the mountains while being right there near the city. Our condo was three miles up one of the mountains from uh, Silverthorne, and we were that close to the city if we needed the store or anything like that. We spent most of our week enjoying the beautiful views around Silverthorne. Thorn. And going to Frisco, that is on the actual route when you exit for Breckenridge. And we spent a lot of time there. One thing for you to do in Silverthorne is to eat lunch at a local deli where locals eat. And we can highly recommend the Blue Moon Cafe for lunch. Their eclairs looked phenomenal. I got a chicken salad sandwich on rosemary bread and it was white, white bread that had the consistency of like angel food cake. It was so delicious and there are only a few little tables in there so uh, small crowd area but the way we could tell it was for locals is because locals were in there with their work dress uh, outfits on and the line was to the door by noon so get there a little early and if you have a larger crowd we can recommend places there are two large brewery restaurants around the corner from there like it's located on a hill and they're just right up the little hill from there when you visit Silverthorne, the number two thing you need to do is have coffee one morning at the red buffalo coffee roaster place it has cool colorado vibes with a little bit of daintiness in it like the menu for that day or the menu of coffees that you could choose from was on like the brown um, brown paper like paper bag kind of paper uh, very very good coffee and I'm pretty picky about coffee and number three thing to do in Silverthorne is to have lunch one day or breakfast at the Mountain Lion Cafe it's right across the street from Red Buffalo Coffee we did not eat there but on a Wednesday morning the parking lot was packed so that has to be a local fave. From the 2018 Olympics, the snowboarder who won the gold medal in snowboarding was named Red Gerard, and he's from Silverthorne. So they changed the name of the town to Goldthorn for a week after he won his gold medal. Cute place to stay, plenty populous enough and close to everything. All right, the number four thing that you will do in Silverthorne on a budget is to go to one of the parks. Silverthorne, Dillon, Frisco, they are all around this humongous reservoir lake. It's huge. So three towns fit around this lake and then you have all the mountain views around you. You're going to love it in the summer. In the description box below, I am going to link six of the parks that you can go to in Silverthorne. Most of them have playgrounds, but there are also uh, walking paths, bike paths for you to go along, and they are all free. I'll also link down below the Town of Dillon Reservoir Parks listing because you have a nature preserve to walk along the lake and it, there's easy parking. It is beautiful, a great place to just go for an hour and walk around or just visit the look at the views. The fifth thing that I want you to do in Silverthorne, Colorado is to take like half a day, take the family up Highway 6 from Silverthorne toward Keystone Resort. It's like 11 or 17 miles and then you will hit the continental divide it's free free parking and when you crest at the very top you'll pass keystone resort but then when you crest the hill at the top you will see the parking all of a sudden on the right and there is lots of uh, lots of parking probably 20 cars can fit there and then you have a space on the right and then you cross the street easily because there's not a whole lot of traffic and you can see easily both ways to the Continental Divide sign. And it has like a little path along 
where you can look down in the valley. And my niece and our 13 year old son, they, the snow was shallow enough. So we do not recommend this, but the show, snow was like maybe six inches to a foot deep. And they walked all the way up and then sledded on their sweatpants and shorts down this little continental divide valley it's just a great place to just go and see the sights in sun and you're not freezing and then you can make your way down the hill back on highway six to the keystone resort and go tubing they're open for like a month in the summer like june 15th to the july 15th depending on how much snow is left be sure to check the site for height and age restrictions but that was the most affordable activity for us to do that cost money that wasn't free it was like 35 dollars for you to tube and know that truckers have to use this highway six coming from i-70 what are you scared about nathan <laughs> the truckers carrying all their haul have to use that to get down into silverthorne so on your way back down be prepared for slow truckers going down but it's only like 11 or 17 miles we absolutely loved the town of Frisco. It is attached to that lake, Lake Dillon, but it is one exit past the Silverthorne exit. It is the Breckenridge exit. You have to drive through Frisco to get to Breckenridge. It's like five minutes, 10 minutes from the Silverthorne exit. They have this little main street that you can walk down. You can ride your bikes everywhere in this town. It's kind of like a seaside village in Florida where if you wanted to go get an ice cream or go have breakfast one morning or brunch, which is huge, in Frisco. If you want to go have brunch, you just walk there leisurely from your condo or your valet, whatever they're called, chalet. <laughs> the sixth thing that I recommend is leaving Frisco as you're going toward Breckenridge and hitting their uh, free disc golf area. There are other things that you can rent. It's called the Frisco Adventure Center or something like that. Frisco Adventure Park. But some of the things are free, but we highly recommend the disc golf. For the seventh thing to do near Silverthorne, Colorado, we recommend doing a free trail that is an easy hike. It's called Rainbow Lake Trail and it is maybe 15 minutes at the max from the town of Silverthorne. There's plenty of parking and it's easy to find. You drive through a small neighborhood and then there's this gravel lot that you can park in. To the left following the sign is the Rainbow Trail and this was a great one for beginners because we had a six-year-old like I said earlier and we also had a 70-year-old and all the mix of ranges and ages and it was easy enough for them but enough of an incline where you got to sweat. If you hike to the lake and back it'll take you maybe an hour. You're not going to have the wide open views from this trail like you're going to be taking the pictures through all the beautiful aspens that are just twinkling in the sun during the day. They're everywhere and it's so beautiful, but it's a great free, easy thing to do near Silverthorne. From that parking lot, you can also take a hard, really difficult trail called Royal Mountain. And this was too hard for me. I went maybe for a half of a mile and I could barely breathe after five steps. It's like a 60 degree incline the whole way up. It'll take you maybe an hour and a half to get all the way to the top because my 13 year old son and my other family members made it to the top, no problem, but they were stopping like every 15 feet, they said, to regroup and re-get their breath up. And the views are wide open from the top of there. It is a rocky edge. It is absolutely beautiful. You get the view of the lake down below and the mountaintop experience. The good thing about visiting Silverthorne and Frisco, Breckenridge, is that there are so many trails in just the neighborhood here, the neighborhood across the street. So we recommend just driving around and finding a trail in a neighborhood and just trying it, see where it goes. The eighth budget friendly thing to do near Silverthorne is to hit up Lake Dillon and go to Frisco Marina and rent their kayaks or stand up paddle board like my niece and our son did. I highly recommend reserving online and I will link that below. We went on a Wednesday morning and there were like five people who did not reserve online and it took quite a while, a good 20 minutes to get set up. But if you are a beginner, reserve your spot online and your time, they tell you what times are open and they will walk you through everything you need to do. And the, you do kind of have an area where you need to stay if you're kayaking, but they tell you that. I did forget several things and what we needed while we were kayaking is one of them. So make sure you check out our video about my video about things not to forget when you visit Colorado in the summer. They're 
things you need in the summer that are different from the winter. Oh, I did write down how much it was. It was $34 per person for two hours of a ride. And the good thing about this Lake Dillon near from the Frisco Marina is that you have little islands that you can stop off and walk around in uh, on if you're with kids and stuff like that. We thought that the only grocery stores near Silverthorne were the Walmart and Safeway in Frisco. They're very old. Silverthorne has a great grocery store that is a Kroger brand. I don't know why it's called City Market, but it is a Kroger and it's right there on the hill in downtown Silverthorne. At the marina, they have one restaurant called the Frisco Bay Island Grill. I highly recommend that you eat at the Frisco Bay Island Grill. The fish tacos have so much meat in them. They were $12 and I think you got two or three. The, the Bay Island Grill is a three leveled restaurant most of the seating or all of the seating is outside the only covered area is at the very bottom and there are plenty of tables but everybody wants to go there because of the views the prices the fish tacos there is a green grassy area do you see that there was a oversized jenga area where you can just have a drink or just wait on your table over by the kayaks at the Frisco Marina is, which is all right in there with the restaurant and the parking lot. Parking is limited by the way, but you can easily walk from the little main street of Frisco. There is a little bitty sandy area, maybe 50 feet long that you can bring your kids and like let them kind of wade swim. There are no ropes, no lifeguards, so be prepared for that. And there's also a playground over there. So it is such a family friendly, budget friendly thing to do if you're near Silverthorne. In the summer, everyone wants to eat here or have a cocktail here at the end of the day and the sun is beating down in the summer. So be prepared with sunscreen and for a wait time. It can get hot, but the views are beautiful and it's a dry hot. Instead of spending all this money to go eat in Breckenridge, we feel like the food in the restaurants in Frisco was a lot more handmade, a lot less touristy, so we recommend eating in Frisco. We ate at Taqueria at the clubhouse and it is like a sports bar with fancy food. Um, the fish tacos had very little meat in them, but the nachos, the half order of nachos was like on a big cookie sheet size. They looked delicious. Be prepared to wait because I do think they are chef made meals. Very, very good, except the fish tacos. We can also recommend Peppino's Pizza. The dough is amazing. There are very tight quarters in there. You have to know what you want when you get up to the one register that they have and you have to wait a while, but it is so good. I had a calzone after hiking for a couple of hours and the dough, everything melts in your mouth. My mom's uh, artichoke salad or chicken salad was humongous. So good portions for your money. And the Greek sub is phenomenal. The bread is soft, almost as soft as my rosemary bread from the other place. Do not miss the Walter Byron Park in Frisco. This is the number 10 thing to do near Silverthorne and everything there is free. There's a great playground. There is a huge open green field almost uh, for kicking the soccer ball. There's that babbling creek with benches right beside it. There's a volleyball court. Oh, and very clean bathrooms and very easy to get to if you're walking from the main street. It's one of those creeks that you can hear the water. So bring a blanket, take a nap, bring a guitar, bring a lunch, have a picnic there. So wonderful, peaceful, gorgeous. The 11th thing to do near Silverthorne is the free historic park and museum in Frisco. There's like a block of many uh, log cabins and each log cabin is a museum. And there's one where they talk about the clothes from way back when and they, if you go upstairs, the kids can try on some of the clothes, adults can try on some of the little party props. They also have free lectures midweek and the week that we were there, we couldn't go, but they were having Sioux Indians come and talk. There is a pavilion right in that block where you can have a picnic lunch, tons of tables for you to sit at. There's a bear, like a bronze bear. One other thing you can do near Silverthorne is the Epic Discovery Park at Breckenridge. This is great for adults and kids. It opened the day we left, but I have family friends who would go there and say it is fantastic. It's expensive, but it is, it seems so much Fun and great outdoor adventure thing to 
spend your money on. If you buy your tickets online on their site, you will have a discount. Be mindful when you're planning your trip to Silverthorne about when the outdoor adventures will begin because we were there like June 8th or June 2nd and it nothing opened outdoor adventure wise until June 8th. We had to go all the way to Vail to Beaver Creek, I think, past Vail to do some outdoor adventures. I will also link our rental house that we stayed in. It is so hard to find a rental house when you're visiting a place like Silverthorne. You don't know who you can trust. This was on Royal Redbird and we got it through VRBO. Very clean, very good for large families, but I'll link it in the description box below for you. When you visit Silverthorne, the outdoor adventures for your family are so expensive. Like zip lining was 150 something, uh, ATV driving was like 212 per person. So I did find these 11 or 12 things to do on a budget in Silverthorne and I hope they helped. Have a great vacation and thank you for popping over.